video orientation of a 2021 Jayco Greyhawk 29 MV. I start at the front, I work my way around the driver's side, come back around the back, and go up the passenger side. I'll stop the video, start a second video for the interior. So from here, we have chassis battery up front. I actually love that. So if you ever drain the battery dead, you can get to it. Washer fluid. Transmission dipstick. Always check that while it's running. And then one back there, you can kind of see it in the video. That is your oil dipstick. Chassis air filter or engine air filter. Oil fill. Power steering fluid. Brake fluid. Coolant. Basically, the only thing I can do up here is actually show you where things are. We don't work on the engine or the chassis, so I will not get into depth on this. But give you a rundown of where things are and what's going on there. As we walk around the side, you do have the wheels on these ones. The tire pressure on this is going to be 75 in the front, 65 on each of the rear. Mirrors on this one, top ones are power as well as heated. The bottom ones are manual. So if you ever forget what I say on the video about tire pressure, right inside the door, it's going to tell you here, 75 when I was wrong. It's 680 in the back, not 65 in the back. First uh, compartment back that is going to be your generator. The generator is a quiet gas, 4,000 watt. You got two clips, pull forward, up, out. <clears throat> generator does have a start and stop button outside. So you can start the generator outside or else you can start and stop it in, inside. Basically, the only time you're ever going to have to open this compartment is when you're changing oil or if you accidentally pop a breaker. The breaker is right there. Right now it's face forward towards us. Facing forward is on. Facing back is off. Generator will run with that breaker facing back, but it will not send power to your appliances inside. So we want to make sure if you ever have a problem with uh, um, your generator is running, it's been two minutes, the microwave's not on yet, that's usually the first place that we tell people to look. <clears throat> oil fill, oil dipstick, and to start and stop it out here, I always tell people to push stop, and that just primes it. Hold that one for about 20 seconds, and then you can start it afterwards. I'm not going to do that outside, I'll do that inside, it gets a little loud and obnoxious on the video. And check your air filter every time you check change the oil, which is going to be at 50 hours for the first oil change, and 150 to 200 hours every oil change afterwards. Lid back on. Doing this one-handed is not the easiest thing in the world, but it can be done. First storage compartment. Not a whole lot going on in there. Compartment behind that is where your power cord is. It is a 30 amp cord. It's about 25 feet, maybe 30, depending on how much they decided to cut off. <clears throat> this does have a coax in, so you can send cable, or if you wanted to do a tailgater of a uh, satellite dish, you can do that as well. And that is power out as well, 110 power. So if you want to hook up an extension cord or something, you could. And there is underneath a little compartment there. It will allow you to run the cord down and still lock this door. Storage compartment behind this. Pretty self straightforward. No problems there. 
slide out, slide out topper. City water connection, basically where you hook up your city water. Um, you can hook this up where you can fill, you're gonna use this connection right here to winterize, to put pressure to your fixtures so you have water when you're at a campground or at home. You're also gonna use it to pump water in uh, if you're ever in a, in a tight situation where you have to have water and you don't have any pressure on anything else. Um, in that compartment there is where we choose what this does. Just keep that in mind. There's uh, two valves in there and I'll tell you what those do in a minute. Black tank flush. Black tank flush is going to be uh, upside down sprinkler basically inside your black tank. Uh, you hook up your hose to it, pressurize, turn it on, and it sprays the outside walls of your black tank. Clean up the sensors a little bit, you know, get any excess out of it that uh, might be showing that your sensors are full even though you know you just emptied it. Big thing with that is do not walk away from it. Make sure your black tank valve is open and you are draining into a sewage uh, dump in order to use that. If you do not, you will fill the tank with it. Fill in the tank afterwards, it will pressurize it. It will go up to the toilet. If the toilet holds, it will actually go to the roof and it will rain down a crappy day for you. We don't want that, so be very vigilant that you have water hooked up to this, that you're either draining or you're on top of it and you're just filling it up halfway and then pulling the valve. Don't walk away from it and do anything else. Outside shower, hot and cold. There is a water pump switch in here. The water pump switch in here is like a three-way switch. There is another one inside, so you don't have to come to this one, but you can. Uh, Light switches on, switches back off. I'm trying to get a good shot of that. It's not always possible. But hot and cold, kind of nice to have an outside shower. Rear slide out. It is a Schwintech slide out, so that's uh, something I will talk about inside. Unleaded fuel, unleaded fuel only. You can put premium in it, but I mean, if the price is where they are right now, go for it. And when they go up $4 or $5 a gallon, eh, I'd consider just regular unleaded. You have your black tank and your gray tank here. The black tank is always gonna be the black handle. Gray tank is gray handle. Always pull the black tank first and then the gray tank. Mostly so you can uh, get rid of any of the excess um, sludge that might be inside your sewage hose. Low point drains, those are going to be for your fixtures. So if you are storing the unit for a short period of time, that's a good way to just make sure there's no water in the system and it just drains out the bottom. All right, I talked about this earlier. Here's your two valves. You have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So right now it is set to two and six. Two and six is gonna be city fixtures. City fixtures means that you're gonna be having, you're gonna have pressure on the hose that's hooked into the city fixtures there. City fill tank is gonna be your filling your fresh water tank from a pressurized hose. Country fill one and four is actually gonna use your pump. It's still the same port, but it's gonna use your pump to pump in like stored water in a uh, rainwater or God forbid out of a lake if you have to that, that would be a you have to three and five I'm gonna turn it to three and five now so when you're here you can actually run the water and have uh, use your pump see how your fixtures work inside so that is normal sanitize winterized lines two and four so sanitize winterized lines that is still gonna use your pump or where you hook up your fresh water there there should be a hose inside that about two or three feet long you put that into that screw it in and you put the hose into a uh, 
your jug of antifreeze and then use your pump to pump it in. Sanitized tanks is uh, one in four again, just like country fill. What I tell people is take a five gallon bucket, fill it with about five gallon, four, four and a half, five gallons of water, put a few, uh, few caps of bleach in it, let it run into your tank, and then let it sit, and then run it through your fixtures. Uh, that's gonna help sanitize, get any mold or anything else that might be in there, something that smells bad. <clears throat> get a lot of questions on that. But basically, follow the one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a really easy system to use, but unless someone's pointed it out to you, it's a little difficult sometimes. A little bit of light in here as well. <clears throat> Starter kit comes with a 25 foot safe drinking hose, a water pressure regulator, a four rolls of RV Marine toilet paper, that's a must, a 10 foot sewage hose that. Uh, there are better out there, but this one's pretty good. 15 drop-ins. The, the drop-ins, they kind of look like Tide Pods. Um, uh, they, what you do is you take, a, again, another five gallon bucket, fill it with four gallons of water, drop one of those into it, let it dilute. Pour that water down the toilet. One, we want a little more water in the black tank. Uh, that's gonna help uh, uh, clean it, keep it clean. Um, what tends to happen is we get more solids in the black tank. That's going to help deodorize as well as break down the solids. And then using the five gallon bucket is going to give it a little more water so you're not starting out dry and just a little bit of water on the bottom. <clears throat> and then a 30 amp to 15 amp adapter. With that, you can hook in. Do not run your air conditioner with that. You're going to hurt something, most likely your air conditioner, if you don't pop breakers in the place you're hooked into. Low point drain, this is gonna be for your freshwater tank. If you wanna drain your freshwater tank after you're done camping for the year, uh, I actually suggest doing it anytime you're done camping for even a couple weeks, just because I don't like stagnant water. It smells bad, it gets funky. LED lights everywhere else. 250 pound capacity ladder. If you're over 250 pounds, get an external ladder. There is a backup camera there as well in the center, black little spot. That uh, goes right on the dash. It's kind of nice. You get a seven-way and a four-way plug. Towing capacity on this one is 7,500 pounds. 750-pound ton weight. Ton weight. Kind of nice to have it. Going around the side here, we do have nice size storage compartment light as well outside speakers are going to be controlled by a switch inside and run off your dash stereo there's two of them outside one here one just in front of the uh, water heater and a little more storage it's got a decent amount of storage for the size of unit it is. <clears throat> we also have an outside hookup here. It is for propane, it's for an external grill. It's kind of a quick connect, kind of like you see on an air chuck. And there is a valve on it as well. So plug it in, turn the valve on, and you'll have uh, propane to your external grill. furnace it says hot don't touch it it gets hot <clears throat> vent for your rear, uh, rear side of your fridge you might want to open that up once a year and make sure it's uh, doesn't have any debris in it we have oh there's light in this one all right so on this side we have a cable outlet so if you had a TV that you put out here, you could actually have uh, antenna TV as well. Or if you're hooked in the other side, you could have cable or satellite TV or cable with a plug. Just in case you want to hook up a coffee maker or something out here. It's kind of nice to have. Furnace, or furnace, water heater. This is electric and propane. Um, 
I'll explain on those inside a little more because there's switches. But the big thing about a water heater is that plug right there, the white plug. You want to make sure you empty this if you're going to store it for a week or two, or especially up to a month. Again, stagnant water is a bad thing inside these. They smell. I, I don't know how many times I could repeat that. I could repeat it a lot. But beyond that, pretty self-explanatory. Just drain it. That's a big one. Propane. Big things you need to know. Location. It's going to be on the passenger side, below the water heater, and to the right. Reason why we want to know where that is is because you can't remove the tank. It is stationary. You fill from this port here, you will never fill it. It will always be filled by uh, someone like me or someone um, U-Haul. There are a lot of other places. Campgrounds do it as well. Propane all the way open or all the way closed. Never in between. And then your gauge is here. Right now it is full. And a little more storage. This does have a solar prep it looks like. Solar prep. Which means you can hook up a solar panel to the roof. Uh, 200 watts, 180 watts, 100 watts. Uh, depending on how much solar you think you might need. Um, but it is something that can be installed uh, from us or from anybody else in the future. Alright. Awnings on this one. They are adjustable. If you can see here, there is a little tab. Let's see if I can't do this one handed. I don't know if I can. Push it down and you'll be pulling down here. Push that in. Now it's down one. It's down two. Three. Four. Five. So this one I have all the way down. The rear one I have all the way up. What that is means it's going to pitch towards the back. So, opening the door, I'll go to uh, the awning inside here, which is, huh, not up there, it's down here this time. Push and hold out. You'll see the pitch in just a second once it's out further. Okay, so the pitch on that one, walk this way a little bit, you can see how it drops down, keep a little bit of dew off it in the morning. Uh, big thing with awning is make sure you run it in at night, just because uh, it doesn't have a motion sensor on it. Uh, even if it did, I'd still suggest that. Nice, nice little thing there. Go back inside, awning light. Outside speakers are going to be controlled here. So right now they're set to outside. We'll turn them to inside just so when you turn on the stereo you hear it inside more. Uh, not outside. Exterior lights. It's going to be the one right above my head here. Power step. Power step on. It's going to be run by the screen door not the main door. run it out turn it off and now it stays out that's great to have uh, mostly you know wake up in the morning had a long night the night before maybe even have a little bit of a hangover it's okay I've had a couple so a big thing with that and now it stays out you don't have to remember about it it's a great thing but if you do forget about it that's staying out you get all packed up you're you're ready to go you want to get on the road that's okay. As soon as you hit the ignition with this door closed or with the screen door closed, the step will still go in. A little bit of a safety feature there.
All right, and then interior lights. I'll go through the jacks in the interior video. Uh, carbon monoxide and CO, carbon monoxide and propane detector there. But, all right, so that would conclude the exterior video. I'm gonna move, uh, stop this one and start a second one for you. Hopefully I'll see you soon.